Hey everyone, we're going to go over USP 825 and everything you need to know about it. Introduction, USP 825 is to provide uniform minimal standards for the pack preparation, compounding, dispensing, and repackaging of sterile and non-sterile radiopharmaceuticals for humans and animals. Standards apply to all radiopharmaceutical processing activities. These standards also apply to sterile intravascular radio active devices such as radio microspheres for intravascular brachytherapy. Some learning objectives are performing a department survey to assess what radiopharmaceutical activities are being performed, use a survey list to match up what standards in USP 825 apply to these activities, access potential paths for nuclear medicine departments to address 825 including executing and cost considerations. Review a to-do list of the SOPs that a facility may need to develop to support procedures performed. Disclosures. There are no disclosures. When was USP 825 created? You can uh, go to the website here or you can type in USP 825 and you can pull it up and download it yourself. Uh, it arrived June 1st of 2019 planned in December of 2019, and then almost immediately later, uh, appeals began. The second level of appeals began, final decision was announced, and all the appeals were declined or denied. Um, it did become official December 1st, 2020, informational only December 1st, and not uh, compendial. Uh, compendial is an adjective not comparable, related to compendium that serves as a standard such as the British Pharmacopoeia and the U.S. Pharmacopoeia of other national and international pharmaceutical standards. One can consult compendial monographs for further information. A compendium is a collection or body of information on the standards of strength, purity, and quality of drugs. Uh, will your facility be ready for USB 825? And when will it not be informational but compendial? The enforcement entities are the FDA and uh, CMS, and deemed accrediting bodies are inspecting uh, for compliance during accrediting nation visits. You can see the different accrediting bodies there below. Radiopharmaceutical handling environments. USP 825 described three radiopharmaceutical areas of environment. One, a hot lab which is an ambient air suitable for immediate use. Segregated radiopharmaceutical processing areas, SRAP, an ISO class 5 PEC uh, located in the designated space. Now a PEC, primary engineering control box, a secondary engineering control room. So a PEC is the like a, a hood, the uh, SEC is the controlled room itself. Also there is a clean room uh, or clean room suites. There is an ISO class 5 PEC located in the ISO classified air. Uh, ante room, pressure gradients, buffer rooms, and garbing. The hood or PEC, the box, uh, Certifications of PECs every six months, daily cleaning and disinfecting. The room, the secondary engine control, has certifications of SEC every six months and cleaning and disinfecting. Environmental They also do have to do environmental testings, monthly surface sampling for microbial growth, and um, visible air monitoring. The operators of the hood um, have to have annual aseptic training, annual garbing training, annual cleaning and disinfecting training, annual sterile glove fingertip testing, annual aseptic medical uh, field challenges. 825 contents, here's just a, an outline of what we're gonna go over today. Um, gonna do an introduction, radiation safety considerations, immediate use for sterile radiopharmaceuticals, personnel qualifications, training and hygiene, facilities and engineering controls, microbacterial air and surface monitoring, cleaning and disinfecting, assigning uh, beyond use dates, documentation, preparation, compounding, dispensing, repackaging, 
quality assurance and quality control. In USP, what does not apply? Not. Uh, administration of radiopharmaceuticals has nothing to do with USP 825. Preparation of non-radioactive drugs falls under USP 797. Preparation of pet radiopharmaceuticals. USP 825 does not apply to State Board of Pharmacy. Accreditation organization, CMS, Medicare, USP 797, a condition of participation. Any organization surveying from them, i.e. the joint commission. Why USP 797 didn't work for nuclear medicine. Um, USP 797 does not allow for the following. Lead shielding, absorbent contamination pads, dose calibrators, computers, look at radioactive vials for particulates. Aseptic handling practices can now be balanced with radiation safety considerations. Radiation contamination control now permitted. Uh, vials contain uh, contents should be at negative pressure or neutral pressure. Disposable absorbent pads can be used to contain radioactive contamination. Pads must be clean and in a low lint or um, lint, no low lint pads, so no chucks. Vertical airflow hoods only. Now in USP 825, we can have dose calibrators and other necessary equipment can be placed in the primary engineering control or the PEC area. Low lint absorbent paper recommended in hot labs. Again, no chucks in the secondary engineering control room. Allowed uh, to wear radiation dosimeters to monitor personal exposure. So cleaning versus disinfecting. Cleaning removes organic or inorganic residual from surfaces, usually with a manual or mechanical process and a cleaning agent. Disinfecting involves destruction of microorganisms, usually with a chemical or physical agent, such as bleach or cavi wipes. Uh, surfaces must be cleaned before they can be disinfected. All technologists need to know wet times for all disinfectants. Disinfecting critical sites. You must wipe the septum before you puncture uh, every single time. Uh, if, uh, if the vial shield top has been uh, closed, the septum must be wiped again before you puncture the septum again. Uh, alcohol wipes must uh, be allowed to dry. Uh, use remote tongs or forceps to wipe hot uh, stoppers. Okay, the hot lab, USP 825 defines a hot lab as an unclassified, unfiltered room area, radiopharmaceutical processing area that is only appropriate for immediate use. Unclassified areas must stay clean, need to develop a daily cleaning routine and document all activities. If it isn't documented, it didn't happen. Okay, here is a um, nuclear medicine pet department, USP 825 readiness checklist. Um, you can kind of fill this out, get something similar if you'd like. Um, if you look over here, uh, you see there's a yes and no column, and then there's a section, and then there's the activity. So um, what I'd recommend is you go through and see first, do you use immediate use sterile radiopharmaceuticals? Yes or no, okay? Preparation of radiopharmaceutical beyond immediate use. Do you do anything beyond immediate use? Yes or no? Um, direct infusion systems, red blood cell labeling, white blood cell labeling, radio labeling for gastric emptying, sterile compounding, sterile compounding used for non-sterile drugs, uh, transporting uh, generators beyond uh, between facilities. Now immediate use sterile radiopharmaceuticals can be uh, compounded without any secondary or primary engineering control. Um, this is for a single patient, um, which strict aseptic techniques need to be followed, and then a strict uh, one hour beyond use date needs to be uh, adhered to. Uh, start time of the preparation must begin when the exposure of the critical site is punctured. So anytime that septum is touched by a needle, you have one hour, one patient after that. Uh, kit preparation and com uh, components must be sterile and FDA approved. All components must be discarded within one hour of puncture of a single patient kit. No longer limits the number of punctures per vial, which that was uh, 
797. You only could puncture a vial one time. Um, adding non-radioactive, sterile, and uh, commercially manufactured pharmaceuticals to the unit dose is allowed for immediate use only. Uh, area for sterile prep and dispensing must be uh, functionally separate from non-sterile compounding areas. That's a big one right there that most, most facilities are having issues with. It has to be functionally separate from a non-sterile compounding area. Dose pooling versus dose splitting. Dose pooling combines doses from two or more syringes to meet one patient's need. It may be performed as immediate use. Uh, anything left must be discarded. Dose splitting, splitting one unit dose for multiple patients. Dose splitting cannot be performed as immediate use and you would definitely need a uh, PEC or, or a hood of some sort. Uh, must follow, hand hygiene must wash hands up to the wrist with soap and water or an alcohol-based rub. Garbing, immediately after hand hygiene, don a clean uh, coat or gown that has not been exposed to a patient care, uh, patient care area. Gloving. If using disposable non-sterile gloves, you must disinfect the gloves with alcohol prior to all standard preparations of the radiopharmaceutical. Preparation of radio-labeled red blood cells. This is one of the biggest and the bulkiest parts of 825. Now, you must have a, you must have a dedicated space for blood handling and must be designated throughout the entire radio labeling process. This area must be free of clutter, clean, and not used for any other radio pharmaceutical preparations or handling until completion of cleaning and disinfecting. Performing only one radio uh, blood cell uh, radio labeling procedure at a time. Dedicated equipment must be used for blood radio labeling, L blocks, syringe shields, vials, forceps, and any other equipment needed. If a dedicated dose calibrator is not available, then means of preventing the dose calibrator of cleaning and disinfecting procedures with appropriate products must be decontaminated, the dipper and the dose calibrator liner. A cleaning must be performed before and after radio labeling. Appropriate wet time must also be followed with appropriate cleaning agents for blood products. A strict beyond use date of one hour, and again the start time begins when the exposure uh, of the critical site or the puncture of the vial. What does that even mean? Uh, L blocks, you, you need a separate area for radio uh, blood cell labeling solution. Um, you can do a procedural, which just means you don't do any other procedures during the radio labeling of the blood cells. You just stop all, um, once it's cleaned and decontaminated, you can proceed with any other dosing. Or you can do a functional uh, solution, which is to have a separate area for compounding. Again, you don't have to have a uh, dedicated dose calibrator, just a, a complete air, separate area um, for red blood cell labeling. Radio labeling on paper. Okay, so the inner container, the syringe or vial, standard radio, uh, standard radiation symbols, um, the words caution or radioactive material needs to be on there, radionuclide and chemical forms, um, the generic names, radioactive and the date and time of calibration must be on there. For all the therapeutic and blood products, you need the patient's name and some form of identifier. Now on the outer container, now the outer container must also be labeled with a standard radiation symbol, the words caution, radioactive material, radionuclide and chemical forms, generic um, radiation and the date and time of calibration and volume. Uh, product expiration, storage instruction, route of administration. Radio labeled white blood cells. There is a lot of very, very detailed, uh, and most facilities is probably not going to do this. This is probably going to be done at a radio pharmacy. Um, but um, if you do want to know more about this, you can go back. Uh, it's section 10.3, uh, radio labeled white blood cells. I'm going to just kind of go through that. An SOP for a nuclear medicine department that only receives unit doses. Now again, this should be the bulk of most nuclear departments. The pharmacy brings you all unit doses. Each unit dose goes to one patient. Um, you do have to um, ensure drug security, uh, general cleanliness, cleaning logs, temperature logs if a drug is stored, um, if drugs are stored in the hot lab, 
aseptic techniques slash disinfectant uh, affecting of the septa. Uh, time limits of one hour must uh, first uh, container puncture or exposure to any critical sites, which is again in section three. How to maintain uh, dose calibrator free of bloodborne pathogens. Again, that's section 7.6. Um, uh, compliant handling adverse events reporting. All the previous mentioned hand hygienes, um, section 4.4, garbing, labeling, drug preparation, performance of uh, drug QC, and uh, documentation. Now, SOPs for a nuclear medicine department that receives unit doses and prepares kits for immediate use and performs uh, red blood cell labeling. So this is everybody that receives unit doses and compounds, uh, essentially an ultra tag kit or a uh, red blood cell labeling kit of some sort. All the previously mentioned drug preparation of the ultra tag kit uh, in in vitro uh, methods used, which is section 10.4, drug preparations of PYP and saline if vivo methods used, how to maintain the dose calibrator free of bloodborne pathogens. SOP for a nuclear medicine department that makes kits for multiple patients over a course of time, which you have to follow all of which of the three prior slides, uh, personnel qualifications, training and hand hygiene, aseptic techniques and training, garbing and hand hygiene, uh, PEC cleaning and disinfecting, glove, fingertips, thumb sampling, media field testing, air quality environment, uh, 20 ACPH, anti room, 30 ACPH, and a buffer room, less than 0 0.02 inches, water column, pressure, gradient from the cleaning. There's a whole lot here. We're going to kind of skip over that as well. Um, if, you, if you do follow the nuclear medicine department that makes multiple kits for multiple patients, uh, I definitely read through this. Contaminated equipment. All uh, equipment that is used or comes in contact must be cleaned and disinfected in between each use. Um, during the radio labeling process, a separate lab coat or gown must be worn during the preparation, and that one cannot go back into a patient care area. Master formulation records only needed if compounding preparations outside of the package insert. Requirements for non-sterile oral mills com uh, components are not limited to common food grade descriptions and are not required to establish identity by validating what that means. Uh, gastric emptying meal preparation. Uh, BUD is beyond use date. The FDC cleared media devices or FDA approved direct infusion generators without the iOS-5 uh, environment. All operations of the direct infusion system must follow the instructions of the use of device labeling, uh, setup, attachment, or needle puncture should be performed in a defined environment. Aseptic handling and ambient air with maximum beyond use date of 10 hours is allowed for these direct infusion systems. The 0.9% sodium chloride bag attached to the device may only be punctured once and be used and um, used for no more than 10 hours. The bag must be labeled with the date and time of puncture and the beyond use date. Any non-sterile parts of the device that may uh, encounter the uh, septum of the radio pharmaceutical vial must be disinfected with sterile 70% isopropyl alcohol prior to puncturing the vial um, with the needle. The symptom of uh, any vial that uh, ports any dilution bags must be wiped with sterile 70% isopropyl alcohol prior to puncturing. When puncturing the vial, an ambient air must only be punctured once. If there are problems with the infusion device, no sterile uh, container or container associated with the system must be repunctured or transferred to a PEC for further manipulation, and the container with contents must be discarded. Radioactive devices, USP 825 applies to all intervascular radioactive devices. Um, applies to radioact radionuclide that emits single photon, a positron, or therapeutic particle. Applies to sterile intervascular radioactive devices, radioactive microspheres for intervascular brachytherapy. Uh, examples, uh, Surtex, surspheres, resin microspheres, or Therospheres, glass microspheres. Conclusion. June 1st, 2020, the USP published the revision 
Bulletin. Official December 1st of 2020. Informational until unless otherwise required by regulatory bodies. This is because revision of the General Chapter 795 and 797 published June 1st, 2019, which contains cross-references that would have made 825 compendial both applicable. At any point, the state agencies, state board or pharmacy or other state agencies, other regulatory such as FDA, CMS, NRC, Joint Commission, and other accrediting bodies can enforce USP 825 starting December 1, 2020. Um, some frequent asked questions. What is the purpose of USP 825? The purpose of USP 825 is to provide un uh, uniform, a minimum standard of preparation, compounding, dispensing, and repackaging of sterile and non-sterile radiopharmaceuticals for human and animal use. How do I know what requirements versus what are requirements and what recommendations are in USP 825? Generally, requirements and general chapters are conveyed when they say must recommendations or uh, are conveyed by the use of the term should or may um, what does parenthesis official date mean the usp official date indicates the date by which the affected user or are expected to meet the requirements of the particular standard. Ensuring compliance with the requirements of the standards is the responsibility of the regulators such as the FDA, state, the government authorities, accreditation, and, and uh, uh, credentialing organizations. USP has no role in enforcement. When will General Chapter 825 become official? It became official December 1st, 2020. Is the administration of radiopharmaceuticals for the patient in the scope of 825? No. USP 825 is explicitly states that it does not cover the administration of radiopharmaceuticals to patients. Um, another big question I've gotten on here a couple times is, uh, should gloves be under or over the um, uh, gown sleeve? Uh, gloves should be worn over the sleeve per section 4.5, which states gloves must complete, uh, complete, completely and snugly fit over the ends of the gown's cuff so the skin of the wrist and upper hand is completely enveloped. Um, there are a ton of other uh, frequently asked questions. You can go to usp.org, frequently asked questions, radio pharmaceuticals, and uh, you'll have a huge list uh, that they have on their website. Uh, but that right there is all I'm going to do for today. Um, if you do have any uh, questions, uh, please, you can put it in the comment section or you can shoot me an email and I'll be happy to, to try to clear that up for you. Thanks.